Good day, this is my school YouTube channel. Right there in this video lesson, we are going to solve the Jam CBT past question for the subject of biology, the year 2009. Remember, my name is Abiola. Do not go anywhere, stay with us, and we'll be right back. YouTube channel right there you are going to join me to solve the questions 1 to 25 so let's begin with question 1 what is the level of organization of an onion bulb okay so the onion bulb is an example of organ all right in plant in animals organs like your liver your heart your kidney etc so generally if we look at the level of organization we can start with um, the macromolecules to organelles Okay, organelles like your mitochondria, you know, your nucleus and the likes. Then you can come to cell, tissues, organ, right, system, or organ system. Then you have the organism level, the multicellular organism level. So the level of organization of onion bubble, once again, is at the organ level. So option B is the correct option. Question two. A characteristic exhibited by all living organisms is what? Okay, so let's look at sexual reproduction. We know that certain living organisms like your fungi can reproduce asexually. So this does not apply to all living organisms. We have aerobic respiration. Of course, there are certain organisms like your yeast can carry out anaerobic respiration. So this is cancelled. The ability to move from one place to another. Okay, this does not apply to plants, generally to plants. So this is cancer. So the ability to remove unwanted substance, this is very well applicable. So this is one thing that we can link to all living things. There are variabilities around there. So the option good to go here is option D. Question three. In a cell, the genes are carried by the chromatin threads. Okay, these are extended form of the chromosome. And we know that it is on the chromosome that is where the DNA this okay they are arranged all right so if you want to bring it up in a packaging the nucleus contains the chromosome then the chromosome contains the genes or you can refer to it this as the DNA that is where the genetic information is being stored all right so let's come to lysosome this is basically the site for respiratory enzymes then the mitochondria you can refer to this as the powerhouse of the cell so the correct option is option b for chromatin traits four alternation of asexual and sexual modes of reproduction is found in fence this are pteridophytes okay so you can see the alternation you know you look at um, the sporophyte generation and the gametophyte generation okay for fence then blue green algae or example your new stock all right your anabina um, right here, binary fission, you know, generally bacteria, asexual reproduction, as well as asexual reproduction. You can also point to binary fission, yeah? Okay, maize, we are looking at a monoecious plant, right? Okay, and it belongs to the, you know, you can refer to this as a, a plant that is um, monocotyledon, yeah, under angiosperms. Remember um, angiosperms and gymnosperms, so angiosperms. All right, so the correct option, sexual reproduction to be precise. So asexual, 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 and asexual. So the correct option is option C for fame. Number five, the first terrestrial vertebrate evolved from what? So if you look at the progressive evolutionary change, okay, so we should begin with the Pisces or the fish, then we move next to the amphibians, then reptiles, then birds, then mammals. Okay, so look at the question, the context properly. The first terrestrial vertebrates. So let's just pause there. The first terrestrial ter vertebrates is actually the amphibians. Okay, so but they evolved from the Pisces or the fishes. All right, so the first terrestrial uh, vertebrate, which is amphibians, actually evolved from the Pisces. So option A is the correct option. Six. 
in plants, the structures that play roles similar to the arteries and veins of animals are what? So this um, recon with transport, right? Transport in animals. So let's bring it to plants. Okay, so what are responsible for transporting plants, especially higher plants? So we can point to the xylem and the phloem, you know, conduction of, um, you know, when you talk about materials being transported in plants, generally you look at CO2, oxygen, right? Um, food, manufactured food, essential chemicals and the likes, mineral salt as well. So look at the xylem, you know, it conducts um, water and mineral salt from the roots, so every other part of the plant, the phloem, conduction of manufactured food from the leaf, okay? to other parts of the plant, either for assimilation or storage when there is excess. So you can see the similarity between this and this. So the correct option is option A for the xylem and the phloem. Question 7. A blue-green algae is not a protophyte because protophytes, we're talking about the kingdom protista. Okay, so protists, they are of the eukaryotic cell. All right. So, example of a protophyte, you can look at a chlamydomonas. All right. So, we're talking about a blue-green algae. Blue-green algae and bacteria, they make up the kingdom Monera. And these are prokaryotic cells. So, prokaryotic, this is what we are looking for. So, if you look at this, uh, it's not because aquatic, because if you look at a uh, blue-green algae and chlamydomonas, an example of protophyte, you know, they like this um, kind of damp or aquatic environment. You know, if you look at chlamydomonas, maybe fresh water or, or sea water, uh, when it comes to blue-green algae, maybe, yeah, something related to water as well. So this should not be the reason. This is a very valid reason. It cannot move. This is incorrect. We know that uh, either prokaryotic cell or eukaryotic cell, okay, they can be motile or non-motile. All right, bringing the two together for comparison. It is not a green plant. This is incorrect. We know that chlorophyll is present in this and also in this. Example of this, you talk about no stock, you are an abina. All right, so these are not the reasons. This, 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 this are not reasons why blue green algae is not a um, protophyte. Okay, it is because blue green algae is a prokaryotic. All right, so the correct option is option B. Question eight The feature that makes locomotion in water easy for fish is the what? Okay, so we should take note of this. Fishes with streamlined muscular bodies, okay, they are adapted for swift movement in water. So option C, streamlined body, is the correct option. Nine, bethos suitable for digging have claws that are what? Okay, so when we look at bethos suitable for digging, we're talking about bethos like your fowls, like your chicken, right? You notice that um, they have very strong feet then they are claws or their toes, okay, they are blunt, all right? This enables them to carry out forage. Probably they are in search of worms, you know, maybe grains or seeds, etc. They want to do dust parts. You know, sometimes you see these chickens, they tend to gather um, some earth, okay, over them. You know, that's just to dust bath, dust bathing, um, basically, you know, probably to eliminate um, some kind of um, parasites on them. Okay, or just to prepare their next. Okay, so Betho suitable, Betho suitable for digging, have claws that are blunt. Then you should take note of this too. So their beaks are also, um, you know, they are very strong and short, all right, because of their diet. So the correct option is option A. The digging claws or the digging nails should be blunt. Option A is the correct option. Question 10 Which of the following is an example of? Carnivorous plants, you know, carnivorous plants, they have uh, special devices, you know, for attracting and trapping probably insects, arthropods, and the likes. All right, so such examples include your bladder wort, your butter wort, your cobra lily, your sundew, your venus flytrap, your pitcher plant. So you can see I've listed quite um, some members, but only this can be identified, right? So the correct option is option B for bladder wort. Question 11. The part of alimentary system of a bird where food is ground into small particles is the muscular back. Okay, and that is the gizzard, you know, right here alongside the activity of the gastric tubes. 
and maybe some small stone particles that the bed ingests from time to time. You know, all these things come together. You can refer to this part as the mechanical teeth or the ant's teeth or the bird's teeth. All right, you know, foods are broken into smaller particles. All right, crop, you can, that's a site for storage before it is passed there. Okay, so the correct option here is option D for thick is that. Do not forget that you can have a jam simulated experience. All you just need to do is to click on the link in the description below. This is going to get you to the My School website. Right there, you get to download the My School mobile app for your Android devices. Or you can check out my school software for your laptops and your computers. So join me as I solve question 12. Which of the following describes a sequence of blood flow from the heart to a tissue? So generally we know that the artery, they carry oxygenated blood from the heart. Generally. Okay, there are exceptions. Okay, from the heart to um, the other part of the body, isn't it? Then we know that the vein brings blood in. Okay, so generally. All right, so from the heart to a tissue. Okay, that should be from the heart to the artery. Uh, basically, from the artery to the arteries, right? From the arteries, then to capillaries. You know, right there are the capillaries. You know, that's where the exchange actually takes place. You know, the supply of um, oxygen and nutrient from here gets into the capillaries, then to the tissue, then there's the exchange, it takes place. Then from the capillaries to there's a linkage to the venues. Okay, so from the venues, waste products, you know, blood containing waste products moves into the vein, then just like that. All right, so but basically, let's uh, face with the provision we have here. So, describe the blood flow, sequence of blood flow from the heart to a tissue. So, we have from the heart to the artery. Remember, there are exceptions, like your pulmonary artery. So, from the heart to the artery, from the artery to the arteries, from the arteries to the tissue. Do not forget capillaries. But let's just stick with the provision here. So, option A is the correct option. So do not forget to always encourage us by hitting that like button for us. Also, click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notification for you to get alerts immediately we upload the next video lesson. 13. The enzymes of the glycolytic pathway are located in the world. Alright, so glycolysis, you know, it is that uh, metabolic pathway where glucose is broken down or converted to pyruvic acid or pyruvate this does not require oxygen all right and this is being um, carried out or enhanced by the presence of enzymes located in the cytoplasm of the cell all right however the pyruvic acid is now completely oxidized okay to carbon the co2 and water in the mitochondria all right so we have this okay so and um, this is what you can refer to as the Krebs circle at this point all right but definitely these enzymes are located yeah so the correct option is option d for cytoplasm number 14 in insects the structure that performs the same function as the kidney in man is the what okay so kidney responsible for excretion Nephridium excretion in earthworm, flame cell excretion in flatworms, Malpighian tubule excretion function in insects, right? Then the tracheal system, um, that is gaseous exchange in insects, so completely house. So this is what we are looking for. So option C is the right option. Question 15. The axial skeleton is found in the world. Okay, so the you know the vertebrae skeleton, each one should have the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton. We know that the appendicular skeleton articulates into the axial skeleton. So where can we find the axial skeleton? We look at the skull, right? We can look at the vertebral column. We can look at the ribs. Okay, then the breastbone or the sternum. All right, where do we have that combination? We have it right here so appendicular skeleton you know talking about the lips the shoulder the hips all right so the correct option here is option a skull ribs vertebral column and breastbone or sternum so option a is a valid option 16 the reproductive system of a male mammal is made up of what okay so right there you should um, include the carpus gland you should include the epididymis you should also include the seminal vesicle. You should uh, include the testes. Okay, this is where the sperm is produced. 
All right, the postrait gland, basically, you know, you're talking about seminal fluid, right? It's an activation of the sperm, okay, right there. Then the sperm ducts or the vas deferens, okay? This conducts um, the sperm, that is from inside the testis, right? Outside to the seminal vesicle. Then we have the penis. This is the, um, uh, the structure outside the body, right? That introduces the sperm into the female reproductive organ, which is the vagina. So, the correct answer here is and, uh, option B, all right? Testes, postural gland, sperm dot, and penis. It is not limited to this. There are, of course, other structures. Claspers, we know they are, um, uh, they are involved in copulation, right? Probably in um, insects or some cartilaginous um, fishes. All right, so fishes. We're talking about male mama ovidots. That's for, you know, very close to the ovary where egg is produced in females. All right, so that the egg can be conducted from there to the uterus or the womb. All right, so that's cancelled, of course. Okay, then we have testaries. Then you can see uterus. This negates this option as well. Uterus or womb, that is for female. All right, so the appropriate option is option B. Question 17. In a bean seed, absorption of water at the beginning of germination is through the micropyle okay so this carries out this function as well you know this serves as you know the opening for pollen to right to be able to reach the um, oval for fertilization okay so we have the ileum that is the scar of attachment this is testa or seed coat seed coat you can see protects protection function then we have the plumo this is the embryonic um, shoot all right so the correct option is micropyle Option B, very good to go. Number 18, the most important ecological factor in a terrestrial environment is what? Terrestrial environment, the most important that should include, um, I want to bring up two, the land surface and the soil itself. You know, without this, nothing about terrestrial. All right, so, uh, you know, we can negate um, other important factors, abiotic factors like your rainfall, your temperature, relative humidity, um, you look at pressure, alkalinity, acidity, that is pH, right? Wind. Okay, these are important. But the most important here, based on the provision we have, we should consider the soil or the land surface. Option D is the correct option. 19. The association between bacteria residing in the rumen of the ruminants is what? Okay, so this is a very good example of mutualism. Other examples involve, um, you know, leaching, algae and fungi, right? And others like that. All right, so what happens here? The bacteria helps with um, breakdown of cellulose to sugar, uh, the synthesis of amino acid and um, vitamins as well. So right here, the ruminants like your goat, your cow, your sheep, provide shelter, you know, food and conducive or ideal environment for growth. So, option D is correct. Parasitism, you know, um, there is a parasite, there is a host, you know, that's, um, the parasite is living off or benefiting and also causing harm to its host. All right, example like your man and tapeworm, okay, uh, predation, you know, there is an hunter and there is the hunted, right, for, his, for instance, lion and um, an antelope very good so saprophytism you know um, examples like your fungi living off from um, dead or decaying matter so the correct option here is option d for mutualism 20 a marine protozoan is likely to have no contratile vacuum mainly because the cytoplasm right is isotonic to sea water Okay, so we should know that uh, most um, marine organisms, right, you can group them to, to planktons and nectons. All right, nectons like your fishes. Planktons, they are the ones that float. Nectons, they are very actively swimming, right? All right, so let's come back to the question. Um, so for the plankton uh, group of organisms, you can look at protists, then protozoans. You can recall your example of protozoa. So uh, we know that most marine organisms, they have body fluids that have um, nearly the same concentration, right? as that of the seawater environment itself. So that implies that the rate at which water lives, the same rate it enters. Okay, so um, normally we know that the contractor vacuum is responsible for the riddance of excess water in protozoa. But right here, since it is isotonic, that means nearly the same concentration, right, with the seawater environment. So there is basically no use of this. 
Okay, so this is correct. Isotonic 2C water. When you refer to hypotonic, all right, lower concentration. Hypotonic, higher concentration. All right, so the correct option is option A. It is isotonic 2C water. 21. In freshwater marshes and swamps, the most important abiotic factors that organisms have to adapt to, this should include um, low oxygen level and the nature of the substratum. You know, this is actually poor in these settings, okay, because um, anchorage. All right. Okay, so uh, if you look through this, if you want to look through freshwater marshes and swamps, you know, matches and swamps, basically for fresh water, you know, uh, they result from poor uh, drainage, all right? And these are just types of um, wetlands, okay? Maybe you can have, um, you know, water logs or the water is just shallow, it's standing over, it's just shallow, all right? In matches, you just notice grasses, mainly swamps, forests, you know, trees. All right, so let's go back to the question, those are just side attractions so in freshwater marshes and swamps the most important about the factors that organism has to adapt to right here nature of substratum and low oxygen level in case you have such provision on that question so option a is the right option do not forget that you can ask those questions right now all you just need to do is to simply tap on the link in the description below this is going to get you to the my school website right there you get to ask your questions and you interact with our solution provider so join me as sense of question 22 which of the following biomass could be characterized by very low rainfall cold nights hot days and fast blooming plants all right so when you talk about savanna that is tropical grassland okay the rainfall there is not um enough to support a rich growth of trees but it's good enough for grasses all right so this negates so we're talking about very low roof so let's con uh, let's consider um mountain forest all right this kind of forest you know you have very high rainfall so we're looking at low rainfall so option a b and d invalid okay so let's now see reasons why we should choose tropical desert all right, in this kind of setting, you have very low rainfall. The, ra the rainfall, they are not even um, dependable, you know. Sometimes for years, it won't rain there, okay? And as well, due to absence of cloud there, okay, so you, it's going to be very extremely hot during the day and extremely cold at night, all right? So once in a while, once rain falls, okay, then you realize that you have this kind of concept fast blooming plants because these plants have to just quickly have a um, very short life um, span or life cycle so that they can lifespan to put so that they can actually release seed the seed can actually become dormant till the next rainfall when it comes then so that it can be supply of vegetation so the vegetation there is very um, they are widely scattered and very scarce all right so the correct option is option c for tropical deserts it is very possible that you have better steps, explanations that you like to share. Please, we are so much interested. All you just need to do is to simply use the comment section below. Kindly indicate the question number and the solutions or explanations you like to share. Question 23. From the information above, determine the percentage of water in the given soil sample. This is very easy. So all we just need to do is to carry out simple calculations. So we have... Um, the mass of water logs okay that would be 29 minus 18 right the mass of the fresh soil that is 29 minus 10 then times 100 percent so this will be 11 this should be 19 times 100 okay so that should account for 1100 yes that is 19 if you carry out division we should have 57.892 or 893 somewhat around that so roughly i can bring this to 60 percent all right so let's see if we have 60 all right in our presentation right so we have that option d so option d is the correct option 24. which of the diseases listed above are associated with water okay you can refer to this as river blindness it is caused by black fly repeated by by black fly and you know black fly they need flowing water for their eggs all right so associated with water 
we have uh, schistosomiasis. Uh, you can refer to this as bilazia. You know, you need um, freshwater snail. Those are the vectors, right? So, what else? Well, then we have three salmonellosis. Salmonella, the bacteria. All right, come from, you can actually contact this through um, contaminated food and water. All right, this is inflammation of the fluid or brain surrounding the spinal, the brain and the spinal cord, all right. Uh, majorly, I think the one worth knowing is the, the one caused by bacteria, right. You know, this is true when droplets, okay, of fluid from the respiratory or the tract, this tract here, okay, it comes from someone that is already infected. You know, it can also be contracted when you share, um, maybe there's prolonged kissing or coughing, sneezing, and when you share utensils, eating utensils with someone who is already infected. All right, so let me just stick with that. So let's look through the options again. So I think the well-combined diseases should be this, onchocerciasis, schistosomiasis, salmonellosis, all right, these three. So we have one, two, three. All right. Um, though some other types of meningitis, you know, some mosquitoes can serve as vector. You know, mosquito water, bridging in water. So, but let's just go with the best uh, combo. I think the best combo we can find here is in option C. One, two, three. So option C is good to go. Number 25. The major cause of global warming is the what? You know, global warming, you want to identify greenhouse gases. All right, you know, these greenhouse gases, they go up there, you know, they tend to trap um, the sun, sunlight energy, heat, to be very specific. And, you know, this leads to this and, um, you know, climatic change. All right, so the major cause, major, this is the burning of fossil fuel. You know, fossil fuel like your coal, like your petroleum, or you can refer to it as crude oil, right? And uh, natural gases, then other things as well. But basically, those are the three. So this is a major cause. You know, this leads to the release of such as greenhouse gases. You know, other man's activity, other man's activities like, um, you know, the, using fertilizers, um, livestock farming, you know, this um, CFC, chlorofluorocarbon. All right, so majorly we attribute it to this. Then let's come to B, construction of dams. Right, there are advantages to this, but we should know that there are also some disadvantages. You know, the reservoirs behind this, all right, can also emit some high level of greenhouse gases but it's not a major one compared to this in comparison all right you know dams it can lead to you know for this construction it's quite expensive you know people will be um, dislocated from their um, origin or their place of residence at first you know it's also going to affect the local ecosystem and so many other disadvantages as well okay use of electricity we know that we cannot generate electricity aside from generators you know you have your solar panels and the likes all right exploration of space yeah this is wonderful but there are some disadvantages as well you know when you do space exploration at first you release a lot of it's expensive very expensive you know then you release a lot of junks you know, you pollute the outer space, you know, like um, old satellites, pieces of metals, you know, um, those uh, rocket uh, boosters that they use, you know, they just are floating um, in space aimlessly. Then also, the astronauts are ex uh, exposed to different kinds of radiations, you know, isolations, the rigs, eating and asteroids and the likes. All right, so let's come back to the question. Burning of fossil fuel is a major cause of global warming. So option A is the right option. Right here we've come to the end of this video lesson, but there are definitely wonderful content to come. All you just need to do is to always hit that like button for us. Also, do not forget that subscribe button and always tap on bell notification for you to get alert immediately we put up the next video content.